Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Say, fellows and girls, do you remember how the Apostle Paul brought the gospel with him when he was put in prison? Remember what a remarkable change the gospel made in the prison? Well, this story isn't about the Apostle Paul, but it's about Bill and his rangers. They took the gospel to the state reform school for boys. The reform school is located on the outskirts of Knotty Pine. Oh, it's not as easy as it sounds. Bill and the fellows had to fight to get the message of salvation inside the reform school. (laughs) Wait a minute, I I almost told you the story. You'll have to hear... The The gospel gospel goes to reform school. Inside large, ominous buildings are almost endless corridors. Along these corridors are locked rooms. Inside the rooms are young lads who made mistakes early in life. Some of the lads are tough as old shoe leather and hard as nails. Others aren't. But all isn't well at the school. The warden and the chief guard are talking about it in the warden's office. Warden, the boys are restless again. You know what to do. Yes, sir, I do. But I don't think that's the answer. Individual confinement always breaks down the toughies, Wayne. Yes, it breaks them down all right. But it doesn't correct the difficulty. What do you mean? Well, I think we're approaching the problem negatively. Sure, individual confinement subdues them. That's all we're interested in. We're not running a kindergarten here. This is a house of correction. But still, I Who's the ringleader this time? Joe Matson. So it's Joe again. Put him in individual confinement immediately. Well, he just got out of solitary two days ago. Put him back again. That only makes him worse. I said put him back. Well, he'll only make him harder to handle when we... Look, I'm the warden here. I said put him in a single room and lock it. Yes, sir. Uh, Wayne, one more thing. Yes, warden? If you want to keep your job as chief guard, I'd... uh... Get rid of those soft ideas about babying these lads, understand? Yeah, I understand. Boy, you sure never know when to give up, do you, Bill? What do you mean, pal? Well, I'm talking about Warden Dawson. (laughs) Well, we're not licked yet. Uh, maybe not, but it doesn't look like he's going to say yes. Oh, well, don't go giving up so easy, fellas. I've seen Bill make harder boiled men than him, say, Uncle. So have I. But he's a boss at the reform school, and what he says goes. That's right, Henry. But you've forgotten one thing. What's that, Bill? The Lord's on our side. The Lord wants the gospel in the reform school. And a dozen hard-boiled wardens couldn't stop the Lord's plan. Well, I know that, Bill, but... Maybe we jump to conclusion, Henry. Uh, Too often we try to work out Lord's plan our way. Yeah, you might have something there, sonny. Let's let the Lord work out his own plan. The way he wants it done. Maybe I am a little hasty. I'll wait and do whatever the Lord wants me to do to help. Well, I'm glad you put it that way, pal. There's the reform school ahead, and we're just in time for the appointment with the warden. You fellas pray while I do the talk. Bill, why do we have to go over this whole thing again? Because I'd like to know why you won't let us bring sports activities and Bible classes into the school. I've told you that. I don't believe in babying these lads. They're tough. Potential criminals, and they need to be taught respect for law and order. That's a negative approach, Warden. Why not teach them the positive way? Oh, you're as bad as my chief guard. I think Wayne's right, if you want the truth. What's the matter with men these days? Don't they have any guts? Does it take intestinal fortitude to run a crime college? Are you saying I'm running a crime college? Yes. You're making the lads bitter and hateful by your negative methods of discipline. 
The Lord would never use the method you use. Oh, the Lord's method may be all right for Sunday school goodies, but not for tough guys with records. Oh, is that so? How do you know? You're not willing to give the Word of God an opportunity to work here. You're afraid to give these lads something concrete and constructive. Something they can feast their hungry souls on. Eh, the only thing I'll feed them is bread and water if they don't behave themselves. I'm afraid that you're wrong, Warden. Terribly wrong. I feel sorry for you. I feel even more sorry for the lads under your iron hand. An iron hand, huh? Get out of my office and take your Sunday school sermons with you. All right. I'll go. But we'll pray that the Lord will open your heart and mind to the truth. Get out! Busy? Come on in, Wayne. Are you sure you have time to talk? That's a big pile of paperwork you have on your desk. <laughs> I always keep that pile of paperwork on my desk. Makes me feel like I've got something waiting to be done. <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking time out to talk. Well, any time I can help, I'm glad to do it. It's always better to talk at the time a person has something on his mind than to put it off. What's on your mind, Wayne? Well, I guess you know that the warden and I don't see eye to eye on how the lad should be handled. Yeah, I know. He mentioned that. What can we do about it, Bill? Well, frankly, I don't know, Wayne. You mean it's hopeless? Oh, I didn't say that. But Warden Dawson is the boss of his penal institution. Yeah, that's right. But his ways of handling the boys are outdated, antique. You could complain to the right people. That might help. No, I... I don't want to do that. He might lose his job. Well, there's only one thing we can do, Wayne. What's that, Bill? We can pray about it. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? I guess the Lord has dealt with harder hearts than the wardens. That's right. Suppose you and I pray right now, and the fellas and I will have a prayer meeting tonight. That's fine, Bill. And I'll come tonight, too. Good. You know, Wayne, there's a time for action and there's a time for prayer. In this instance, action is out of the question. You all know why we're here. I don't need to go over the purpose of our prayer meeting again. Wayne... Will you start? I'll be glad to, Bill. Gentlemen, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you intercede for the lads at the Reform School who need the gospel of salvation so badly. Please soften Warden Dawson's hard-boiled attitude. Make him see the folly of his way. Almighty God, and each time you open door that men close... So a wonderful story of salvation can be told. We are up against stone wall, but we know you have planned to open closed doors. Make it possible for us. Every... You've heard our petitions. We know that the promises given in thy word are everlasting. Give us the patience and the trust to wait upon thy good pleasure and the fulfillment of thy will. Hear our prayer for the gospel's sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Only trust in holy trust in. the Lord moves in strange and mysterious ways to accomplish his plan. Perhaps this is one of them. High excitement runs wild inside the reform school because the boys are on the rampage. A riot is near and the guards are having a tough time controlling the frenzied mob of lads. Wayne and Warden Dawson are trying to calm the boys down. Get those boys back to their rooms. Nick, Tony, Sam, Bob, push them back down the corridor into the auditorium. And lock them in there till they cool off. What are you planning to do now, Warden? Let's go into my office where we can talk. That's a good idea. 
Well, what do you think about it, Wayne? Well, I'd say we've got a pretty serious situation. We've got to get those lads back to their rooms and quickly if we can. Well, that's right. And we'll put them in solitary confinement, especially the leaders, until they cool off and acquire some common sense. Well, that's only one of the things they're complaining about. I don't care what they're yelling about. Do it. But what if they repel again? Jim and Sandy have been hurt. The boys are using homemade clubs and blackjacks to fight the guards. That settles it. Break out the tear gas and call the state police and rangers. We're going to need help. Ranger headquarters, Bill speaking. Yes, Warden. What? Yes, yes, we'll be there as soon as we can. Yes, sir, goodbye. Well, what's cooking, Bill? The boys at the school are rioting. No joking. Well, how come? I don't know. Several guards have been hurt. They need help. Let's get Stumpy and Grey Wolf and be on our way. serious this is from the balcony of the auditorium, Bill. We managed to pin them all in the auditorium. Well, let's have a look. Well, Bill? The lads are pretty angry. Yeah. Most of their anger is directed at you, Warden. What does that prove? I'm the head of this institution. It's uh, natural for them to scream at me. What if any plans do you have, Bill, on the spur of the moment? I'm going into the auditorium and talk to the boys. Oh, no, Bill, no, you no. can't do that. Yeah, certainly you can't be serious, Bill. One guard has a fractured nose, another a scalp wound, two have black eyes, another has several minor cuts. I never was more serious in my life. But, Bill, Henry, I... please let me talk. I'll not assume a responsibility for your safety, Bill. I'm not asking you to. But I go in there on one condition. What's that? If I quiet the boys down and get them to go back to their rooms, you must allow us to bring sports activities and Bible classes inside these walls. All right, I'll agree to that. If you can do your part. Yes, that's right, Warden, if I do my part. How do I get to the main floor of the auditorium from here? Uh, right down that stairway, Bill. The doors are at the end of the corridor. I'll unlock them for you. We'll all go in in case you need help. No, I'll go alone, Warden. Wayne will open the door. I don't want them to get the idea that this is a trick. All right, let's go, Wayne. Right. Are you rangers going to stand there and let him walk into that, 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 that lion's den by himself? Well, Daniel didn't have anybody with him except the Lord. Leave the doors unlocked, Wayne. I want you to get out of sight, though. I will, boy. And I'll be praying that your plan will work. Good boy, Wayne. All right, open the door. Right. But I know how you're going to do it. What you don't know, Wayne, is that Bill is using a mob-quieting trick as old as the hills. Bill has taken a half a dozen steps inside and stands like a statue. The angry lads realize that somebody new and different is standing before them. But he doesn't say a word, just stands there like a piece of granite. Now the angry lads are curious. Who is this guy in a different uniform? Why doesn't he speak? Slowly their curiosity overpowers their anger and they quiet down. Maybe this fellow in the strange uniform will say something. Maybe something important. Now they're waiting for Bill to speak. They're ready to listen, but Bill still stands with his arms folded like a marble column. Why don't you say something, mister? Maybe he's dumb and he can't talk. Knock it off, you guys. We shut up to listen to him, so let him speak. My name is Bill Jefferson. I'm a forest ranger. I've come here to help you. Now go back to your rooms quietly, and I'll visit you room by room and tell you how I'm going to help you. Says my Uncle Louie. You're just another cop. That's right. What are you trying to... I happen to be a Christian, young fella. A Christian doesn't go back on his word. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. 
Well? Let's go back to our rooms. I believe Bill's on the level. Jerry! Jerry, you follow Ned. It's a free throw for the red shirts. Ned's bigger than I am. How else can I stop him? Well, that's no reason to be a poor sport. It's not Christ-like. The fact that Ned has an advantage in height should be a challenge to you to outplay him. I never thought of it that way, Bill. I'm sure glad you and the other fellows are teaching us how to be Christian. Thanks, Jerry. Ned, take your free throw and we'll go on with the game. Well, next week, fellas, we'll begin our New Testament studies with the Gospel of John. Will you read the first three <laughs> chapters in the meantime? That's all for today. Okay. Yeah. Well, the Bible study is real slow. Henry, I'd like to thank you for these wonderful studies. Well, they've really helped me. Oh, thanks, Al. I only wish I could spend more time with you fellas. Well, that's mighty fun of you to say that. You know, a lot of folks think that we're not human because we're in reform school. But thanks again. Bill, you're doing wonders with these lads. They seem more content and happy. Well, you're seeing the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in the lives of these lads, Warden. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I know you'll see a big change in the boys if you'll give the gospel enough time to take its powerful, positive effect on them. You're giving the lads something for their starved souls, Warden. Bill, as long as things keep improving, you can work with the boys. I won't interfere at all. Thanks. We'll do our best to put the boys on a solid foundation. Well, Joe Matson's coming out of individual confinement today. I'm going to have a talk with him in my office. I gotta get going. Joe Matson? Hmm, seems I've heard some pretty vicious stories about him. No, they're not stories, Bill. They're facts. He's a tough and bitter young man. You, um, had enough, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, uh, ready to behave yourself? Yeah, sure, Warden. Well, I think you know by now that we mean business, Joe. Individual confinement isn't any joke. But our lads and you have snapped under that treatment. I ain't about to snap. I'm just sick and tired of solitary. Yeah, well, you behave yourself and you won't have to go back. You know, Joe, you've got such a miserable record here that it wouldn't take much more to send you to the state penitentiary. One more ornery trick of yours and you'll be sent there. Is that clear? Yeah. All right. You can go back to your room now and get back into routine again here. Hey, you guys. It's Joe. He's back. Yeah. He must have got tired of living by himself. Hi, guys. What kind of beat, Joe? Was it rough and solitary? What you guys reading? Give me that. Hey, that's my Bible. Take it easy. <laughs> You're what? Have you guys lost your minds? Reading a Bible, that's only for goodies. That isn't what Ranger Bill says. He says the Bible is for everybody. And the Bible says so. Listen, you guys, if you know it's good for you, quit this crazy stuff. Yeah? What if we like it? Maybe we don't want to quit. Listen, you jokers. You'd better or else. Bill, you noticed change in fellows in last week? I'll say I have. What's causing it, Bill? I haven't been able to put my finger on it, pal. You know, Wayne? Yeah. Well, let us in on the secret, Sonny, before all of our work goes up in smoke. It's Joe Matson. Joe Matson? Are you sure, Wayne? Well, the change has come over the boys since Joe's out of solitary, hasn't it? He's right, fellas. I was afraid this might happen. Uh, Joe have that much influence? I'll say he has. He's probably threatened every fellow in here with a beating if they turn religious or something like that. Are you sure Joe's the cause of the sudden change in the attitude of the boys? You can have my job if I'm not. He's a tough egg, Bill. 
I see. Is the warden in his office? Yeah, I think so. Fine. I'm going to ask him if I can have a talk with Joe. There he is, Bill. Thanks, Wayne. Come in, sit down, Joe. Joe, you know who I am by now, I'm sure. And I know who you are. What's more, I know your record here at the Reform School. Yeah? Well, when do I get the sermon? Joe, let's talk straight from the shoulder, okay? No, I ain't going nowhere. I gotta listen to you. That's what the warden said. Joe, if you don't want to listen to me, you don't have to. You can go right back to your room right now. It'll be perfectly all right with me. What do you say? Yeah, I ain't got nothing else to do. Go ahead, preach. You may have the other fellows bluffed into thinking you're a tough guy, Joe, but I know differently. Yeah? How do you know so much? I'm not able to answer that right now. But I happen to know a lot about you. Things you did before you came here. Before you made your mistake. So? So why the change in your personality since you came here, Joe? Ah, that's my business. Mine, too. I think you're a fine lad, Joe, deep down underneath. Just because you made a mistake isn't any reason to go sour. Yeah, that's what you think. I'm going back to my room. Now, one more thing, Joe. Yeah? Even though your family has forsaken you, you still have two friends. Yeah? Who? Myself and the Lord. Ain't that nice. Uh-oh. Apparently Bill's talk with Joe was a waste of time. Joe's instigated another riot in the school. Only this time, the situation is more serious. One building's on fire and another badly damaged. After a violent struggle, the warden and his men finally cornered Joe and his ringleader friends in a small building. The rest of the lads have been herded back to their rooms. The warden sent for Bill and the rangers. The warden's not happy at all about the whole thing. It's a good thing we got fire engines around here. The whole place will burn down. I should have my head examined for listening to soft-hearted fools. Teach them the gospel and they'll be good little boys. Poppycock. Pure, unadulterated humbug. All the boys are back in the rooms except Joe and a half dozen more, Warden. Are they still in the laundry? Yes, sir. We've got them surrounded. They can't get out. Go in and get them out. Well, we've tried. They've got ammonia guns rigged up. How in the name of common sense did they get them? I... I don't know, sir. I don't know. While you nimble brains were softening me up, they made the ammonia guns. I'll be the laughing stock of every penal institution in this country. Why did I ever let myself get talked into letting you gentlemen work with these boys? When we get this thing under control, things are going to change. I'm going to rule this school with an iron hand. I'll show you Sunday school teachers how to run a house of correction or die in the attempt. Wayne. Get your men and tear gas those lads out of the laundry. When you get them out, go in, they go into solitary. Bread and water for a month. I'll show them they can't run me around in circles. What's more, Jim Matson's going to be transferred to the state pen after he gets out of solitary, and I'll get going. Yes, sir. Right away. Oh, wait a minute, Wayne. Keep out of this, Bill Jefferson. You've caused enough trouble already. Are you through running off at the mouth, Warden? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking to you. The situation at this school developed under your own doing. We got in here too late to prevent this. Don't blame the gospel for your own shortcoming. Hit him again, Sonny. Get out of here. I'm not going anywhere until I finish my job. I'm going over to the laundry and talk to those lads. Bill, they've got ammonia guns. Ammonia guns don't scare me. I think I've got Joe Matson's number. Hey, you guys, here comes Bill. Let him in. Maybe he can talk to the warden for us. Yeah, yeah, we can trust him. You guys ain't letting no cop in here. Get ready with your ammonia guns. We'll blast him when he gets near enough. 
Get a move out, he's almost here. What's the matter? You guys got ten ears? I ain't blasting no light, nice guy like Bill. You ain't, huh? You blast him or I'll blast you. You squirt a money on Jerry and Ned and I'll let you have it right in the face. You heard him, Joe. We like Bill. Open up, fellas. This is Bill. I want to talk to you. I'll let him in. Okay, Jerry. We'll keep Joe covered. Hi, Bill. Oh, Jerry. Let me have your ammonia gun, Joe. Turn the muzzle towards yourself, Joe. No funny business. Thanks, Joe. Let's put the ammonia guns on the table, fellas. Why'd you come here, copper? To tell you, fellas, that you're making it bad for everybody. Including yourselves and me. You, Bill? Yes. How come you? Because I almost had the warden soul in giving you fellas sports, shop, classroom studies... And most of all, church services, Sunday school, and Bible classes. Now you've upset the apple cart with this shenanigan. Why did not think of that before? We're only hurting ourselves. Yeah. I'm through listening to Joe. Me too. All he knows is to be tough. He ain't got a brain cell working. You're a smart cop, aren't you? Here's what I think of you. Hey, Joe! Bill! Joe. Joe, you, you hit a federal officer. I'm sorry you did that, Joe. You hurt my faith in you more than you did my jaw. Why don't you hit me again? Bill, are you crazy? It's all right, Jerry. Go ahead, Joe. Get all the bitterness and hate out of your system. What's the matter, Joe? You're supposed to be tough. Knock off the wisecracks, fellas. Well, I, I can't hit you again, Bill. How can a fella hit the best friend he's ever had? Joe, I, I could send you to the state penitentiary for what you've done. Well, I know that, sir. I, well, I'm ready to take my punishment. Joe, you, you've changed. Yes, sir. Thanks to Bill and the rest of the Rangers. What, what made you change, Joe? Well, two things, sir. Yeah? Bill told me I had two friends, himself and the Lord. Then when I hit Bill, he... Well, he treated me with love and kindness. Nobody ever did that to me before. Well, I knew then that I must find out how to become a Christian. Well, uh... I, I'm giving you another chance, Joe. I guess I've learned a lot. Let's start from scratch again. What do you say, Joe? Uh, well, I, I don't know what to say except, well, thanks. <laughs> uh, from now on, things are going to be different around here. Thanks to Bill and his rangers. <laughs> Boy, things are pretty tense there for a while. You know, boys and girls, when, when we let the Lord work out his plan for doing things, it seems that all of the big problems just melt away. Listen next week for more adventure with... Ray!